Well, my uh, clock just turned 12, so I think we should get started. Uh, welcome and thanks for joining us today for our new knowledge session. Today is number two in our new Grow with Google series. This series is a professional development workshops to support business owners and nonprofits and citizens, not only in Washington County, but it's become a statewide initiative in Virginia. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Sandy Ratliff. I'm with Virginia Community Capital. Um, and if you're not familiar with us, we are a community development financial institution providing lending, investing, and community innovation services. Uh, this is a collaborative effort, um, and we're proud to be a partner with the Washington County Chamber of Commerce, the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator, and the town of Abington to um, promote and provide these sessions on a bi-weekly basis. It's hard to believe that we started this program in 2014 as a way to support the Washington County Business Challenge to help our competitors new and existing businesses tap into resources. And it's kind of grown since then. And it's becoming one of the oldest running um, professional development training series in the state of Virginia. Uh, today's session is being recorded for education and training purposes. Um, and also to keep the webinar flowing, we do have everyone muted. However, if you have a question for our presenter, if you will post those in the Q&A section, we will address those at the end of the session. Um, I will note that uh, since this is being recorded um, later today, that will be posted on the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubators Facebook page, but also we have a new knowledge channel on YouTube and it will be placed there if you want to miss something. Uh, that was shared and you or you want to share it with someone else we will uh, it'll be on there and I'll send you the link afterwards. We're delighted to have Courtney Stringer with us again. She is our Grow with Google coach. Uh, she's going to lead today's session. Many of you know Courtney from her years of working in economic and community development in Southwest Virginia. Courtney will share more about the Grow with Google program, the collaboration and the purpose, as well as uh, the great content that she's going to share today. So, Courtney, I'm turning it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Sandy. And thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. I am going to go off camera so that I can share everything with you. Give me just a second and let me get my screen up. Okay, Sandy, are you good? Can you see it? I don't see it yet. You're not coming up yet. Now we're working on it. There we go. Just have to enlarge it. We're good. Okay. And switch. Okay. How's that? Are we good? Uh, no, you, uh, you took, it needs to be back to full screen. There you go. You got it there. And you're not on the notes page? No. It worked. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, thank you again for being here with us today. And the Grow with Google program is a partnership between Main Street America and downtown Withville and Google, of course. And we are so excited about this program. I was hired back in December and um we have been offering programs ever since, and we're very excited to be able to bring this to um, our region here in far southwest Virginia. And as I was looking at the um, registration, I see we have people on the complete opposite side of the state. So thank you all for taking the time to be with us today as well. And as we talked about last time, if you were able to join us, if you can't be here for the noon session, I've had several emails saying that noon's not a great time for them, like Sandy said. She does share that on the Incubators Facebook page and then also the YouTube page. And anyone who is registered, she also sends that link out um, to your email. So lots of ways to catch the information. And we have eight more of these after today. So please register for those. And we look forward to having you. So Grow with Google was launched in 2017. It assisted 8 million Americans up to this point, And we're growing each day. And we have a network of over 8,500 partners. Our target audiences are small business owners, veterans and military families, job seekers, students, and educators. Um, we also have started working with startups and developers in the past um, couple of years as well. Grow with Google helps people across the United States grow their skills, careers, and businesses by offering free tools, training, and events. 
there within this um, program with Main Street America, due to um, the pandemic, they did a survey of all their Main Street businesses to see what the main issue was um, facing them. And other than the supply chain, it was digital tools. A lot of those Main Street businesses had not pivoted to be online. And so they um, collaborated together and selected 10 states and hired digital coaches. And looking at this map, you can see the states that were selected. And gratefully, um, Virginia was one of those where the yellow pin there. And um, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Iowa, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Oklahoma, Ohio, and Oregon. So I have a group of um, nine other partner states, and we meet every other week um, and collaborate and talk about things we see that are facing our small businesses and any issues that um, may come up. I had, after the last session, I had somebody who their business profile had been suspended. So we can do one-on-one sessions after um, we meet somebody if that issue comes up. Why Virginia? Google is very invested in Virginia and downtown Whiffle has a phenomenal staff there and they are very innovative and um, they're also right off I-81 so convenient um, to get to in far southwest Virginia or you know the Roanoke Richmond area as well and we plan to serve our goal is 6,000 small businesses and entrepreneurs. All the trainings we offer are completely free and we will never try to sell you anything. So if you happen to receive a call from someone trying to sell you something related to Google, it is definitely not from our team. And um, just take that as a warning. Um, The way we deliver our trainings, virtual, like we're doing today, um, which is usually for a one hour maximum. We do in-person classroom settings, um, which provides a little bit more hands-on if um, you're not as familiar with the Google tools. We have seen in our face-to-face courses, we have people all over the spectrum who some have never used the tools, some have dabbled in it, and then some are pretty much experts. And then also one-on-one, like I was saying earlier, if there's um, something that's an issue that's just something that you're facing that, you know, a lot of other people aren't seeing, then we can also do some virtual or in-person 30-minute troubleshooting sessions as well. So, Reach customers with Google online. Thank you again for being here. I'm Courtney Stringer and I serve as the Virginia Grow with Google Digital Coach. And we're going to learn how customers find your business online and what happens when a customer searches for businesses like yours. We'll explore how the search works and three ways that your business can appear in Google search results. I'll also share some other um, digital tools with you that will help grow your online presence. So take a second, think about how you typically find a business or restaurant that you plan to visit or want to buy something from their website. I bet that many, if not all of you, start with an online simple Google search, comparing the prices, reading reviews, and doing other research. I know that when I go um, on vacation, one of the first things we search for is like best places to eat, Um, look at the reviews and um, see what they recommend to eat. So guarantee many of you on the um, session today feel the same way. So what does that mean for your business? Your website might be the new front door, the first interaction a potential customer has with your business. Your online presence may be the only place your customers can connect with you or make a purchase from your business. So now is more important than ever to grow our online digital storefronts. We saw the importance of this again through the pandemic. According to Google, from February 2021, searches for local plus businesses have grown more than 80% year over year, including searches like local businesses near me and support local businesses. And we're continuing to see consumer behavior evolve. In 2022, there was a 50% increase over 2021 in searches that include the phrase, how to save money on, and you fill in the item. And how many times have each of you searched for one of those same things? I know when I was working on this presentation, I thought, gosh, I've done that so many times in the past year. So the agenda for today's session 
Um, I'll start by showing you how Google search works and the three ways you can appear in the um, search results page. Search engine optimization, SEO, a business profile, and online advertising. Let's start with how Google search works so you understand how your website can show up in search results. Google uses a computer program to power the search. Um, in this context, it's an automated software that helps locate information to answer a user's questions. The Google um, program sorts through billions of websites sites, and pages to deliver the most relevant content for a given search. The purpose of this search is to deliver the best results to the um, person asking the question. Let's look at it another way. Imagine a library with billions of books that's constantly growing, but there's no catalog to help you find anything. You're not just searching for a book. You need a certain book with specific information. That's kind of what the web's like. When you think of it that way, finding what you need seems impossible, but that's what search engines like Google are for. When a person searches on Google, they may start off by typing a word or phrase describing what they want to find on the web. The image on the slideshow shows the Google homepage with the search query typed into the search bar. Google helps people find information on the web by sorting through those billions of web pages and showing people where to find the answers they're looking for. Years ago, before the internet, I'm sure many of you can think back to going to the library and trying to search through things um, for answers. Google has made that and the internet has made that so much um, simpler and makes us uh, searching for things um, at the drop of a hat. Basically, search is a big piece of software that takes the query out of the query you type into the search bar and looks for the answers across the web. This illustration is an example of a Google search results page. And it's important to note that the content and layout of this page may be different depending on the search and also if you're searching on your mobile device. So you can see the text ad usually runs around the top, the organic results, and then the business profile over on the right-hand side. Today's workshop focuses on typical ways your business can appear in the results. And I'm sure you all have seen this many times and thought, hmm, do I click the ad or do I go to the organic results? And lots of times, one of the first things in the text ad box is also in the organic results. So behind the scenes, of course, it's more complicated than that. There's a lot happening, but Google makes its own copy of the entire web, scans it, and catalogs all the content like an index book, except 10 trillion times longer. So if a potential customer searches for the phrase yoga pants, Google identifies all the relevant results, puts them in order of what it thinks are the most useful for that consumer. To do this, it considers where the searcher is located whether the page was updated recently, how many other pages link to that page, whether there are pictures of yoga pants on the page, and much more. It does all this in less than one second, billions of times a day. The image on the slide is an illustration of a search for yoga pants with a chart of different links that it might lead to. So you can see all that going on behind the scenes. Um, when we are just getting an automatic um, result after we do that search query. So SEO, search engine optimization. Now that you understand a little bit more about the scope of the web and how Google works to index all that information, we can move on to talking about how to get your business to show up when people search for what your business has to offer. As I mentioned, Google considers many factors when cataloging and ranking pages. That means there's more than one way you can help your business appear on Google and move up in the rankings. So let's talk about the organic results. The first way your business might show up is in what we um, call the organic natural resort, results down the center of the search page as shown here. Google builds these pages of results for every single search to deliver the most relevant results for that particular searcher. For example, the search results might look different for people searching from Saskatoon, Canada and Nashville, Tennessee. 
you can see how the website company called Trade Street Jam can appear in Google's organic results. How does Google decide what websites to show and in what order? There are more than 200 signals that Google considers to determine which web pages should appear for what searches, and that organic search results are different than paid search advertising. How, you, how your site ranks in organic search is truly a matter of your site being the most useful answer to the query entered by the searcher. That is what they're looking for on Google. While you can't just buy a better organic search ranking, you can put effort into optimizing your website to improve its visibility on Google and other search engines. And that's what's called search engine optimization or SEO. I could do a whole presentation on SEO, but for today, we're going to do a quick overview. SEO refers to the techniques to improve your website rank and attract higher quantity and quality website visits to grow your online presence. It's important when it comes to managing a website for your product, service, or brand. When consumers use search engines, they typically are looking for specific products, services, or solutions. Sometimes they want to be entertained, sometimes they want to be educated, or sometimes they just want to be reassured that they're making the best decision um, price-wise. Regardless, they have a specific need or want your website, want that your website might be able to fulfill. Ranking in search results for particular keywords, topics, and phrases can help you connect with your ideal customer. And there's a quick tip there at the bottom. Um, you can use that when you are wanting to search, and we'll go through that in just a moment. And I will also provide these um, quick tip resources in your PowerPoint presentation that Sandy shares. People who are just getting started with SEO have a tendency to think that it's very complicated or that you have to have a background in technology to do it. But there are plenty of non-technical things you can do to help your pages show up in search. First, focus on your content. Regularly publish relevant original content. It should be useful and accurate. There's no rule of thumb, but more frequently, the more frequently you update your website, the more likely it will be to appear in the search engine results. When you're writing content, include keywords that potential customers would use to find your pages. So if you're a, um, someone that sells pizza at your restaurant, you want to make sure you're using pizza as one of your keywords. Organize your website um, logically into clear labeled areas. That leads visitors to more easily find what they're looking for, and it helps Google understand the content on your website. Every web page includes a title and description, which is part of the code. Many content management systems like WordPress or Wix offer the option to enter this text. If you, in your business and your website, have the option, make sure all of these title elements are descriptive, specific, and accurate. Google Trends. Google Trends can help your research content strategy, help you research content strategies and refine your marketing message for your website. It shows the relative popularity of different keywords searched on Google over a specific amount of time. The data is presented in a graph on a scale of zero to 100, with 100 representing the peak search volume. If it has enough data, Trends can show a forecast of search volume, related popular searches, and rising searches. Searches experience a significant growth. You can use this to compare the popularity of different words and phrases, determine seasonality of different searches, see where the searches happen geographically, and also see related searches. Here is an example for you all of how a real business named Tea Drops. <laughs> Uh, use Google Trends. When researching how people in the U.S. search for bubble tea, they learned that on the West Coast, more people search for the word boba. On the East Coast, more people search for bubble tea. That information can be incredibly useful when developing a content strategy for your website and your advertising. The image on the right is a screenshot of the Google Trends page on a mobile device showing a line graph comparing the interest over time in the for the terms boba and bubble tea. 
And also the quick tip at the bottom, that will be included in your resources as well. So now I want you all to do a little exploring. I want you to open a website and go to g.co backslash trends. And I'll give you a minute to get there. Once you get there, I want you to enter keywords or phrases that you want to compare, something that you feel is um, significant to your business. I'll give you a minute to think about that as well. And then narrow down the results by the location. And you can also adjust the date ranges to see how um, the results appear. Uh, appear and if they're different. And then you can also explore related queries to see what um, other people are searching for that are related, but not exactly what you search for. Give you just another second. The first time I was introduced to this, I think I spent an hour just doing searches and I would do um, a search for just this region here and then I would do it for the broader Virginia and then I would do it, you know, somewhere totally separate and see what those were. And it was so um, interesting to me to see the different things people search for and how significant that can be to impact in your business if you don't have those keywords on your website. So let's move on. Let's go over a few more technical things that um, can affect the search engine optimization. First, make sure your website loads quickly, especially for people viewing your website on a mobile device. A slow site will encourage visitors to navigate away from it, and it can also affect your search rankings. How many times have one of you pulled something up and it not loaded on your um, mobile phone, and so you move to the next site um, that you think of that relates to the same topic? Be sure that your website is easy to use and read. No matter how visitors get there, you want it to be um, resourceful when they get there. Many websites are built with a responsive design that adapts to the type of device being used, whether that be a mobile device or tablet. There are two Google resources that can help with those. It's called a mobile friendly test and Google search console. So Google mobile friendly test is a quick, easy way to test whether a page on your site is mobile friendly. This Google tool is free and it tests how easily a visitor can use your website on the mobile device. Does your website look good when you pull it up on a smartphone? Even more importantly, is it easy to navigate and use on a mobile phone? Some websites that look amazing on a desktop computer are not user-friendly on a mobile. So you want to make sure that um, because so many of us use mobile phones for all of our searching now, um, you want to make sure it's easy to read and easy to navigate. If you want help improving your mobile site, check out the mobile friendly test, enter a page URL and see how your page scores. This test integrates with another Google tool called Search Console, but you don't have to use Search Console to access the mobile friendly test. Um, some of the recommendations might be technical and you might wanna ask your website developer for help, save that information and pass that along to them if you have somebody managing your website. Again, that quick tip will be on your resource page. So the Google Search Console, this tool um, used to be called Google Webmaster Tools. And it's important for search engine optimization because it helps you measure your site's search traffic and performance, fix issues, and improve in Google search results. Search Console is typically used by SEO specialists or marketers to monitor website traffic, optimize rank in Google search results, and make informed decisions about the appearance of your website in the results. The information in this can be used to influence 
influence technical decisions for the website and do sophisticated marketing analysis in conjunction with other Google tools like Google Analytics, Google Trends, and Google Ads. Even if you don't handle the technical detail for your website, you should be aware of this feature and what information it offers. And you can access it there um, at the bottom. You see the quick tip with the link. And the image shown is a screenshot of the search console on a mobile phone. Okay, so another activity. <laughs> now that we've discussed the basics, of search engine optimization, let's take a step back and see if your website appears on the first page of Google results. So go to google.com. Think of a word or phrase that relates to your business. It could be the name of your business, a product name that you sell, or the type of service you offer. Do a search for that word or phrase on Google and take a look at the results. So I'll give you a second to do that. And if you want to just put that in the chat, that would be great. So did you see your website? If you're not on the first page, you can click next at the bottom of the page to see more results. If you do see your website, how does it look in the results? Do you like the text that's being displayed and is it accurate and compelling? When you click on it, does it take you to the appropriate page on your site or does it take you to an error page? Also very important because if someone goes to an error page, they're going to go right back and go to the next um, link that's available to them. If your website does not appear in the search results, what sites are showing up instead? This is great information to have because these are your peers that you're competing against to appear above in your search. Doing searches like this periodically can help you figure out what is and isn't working on your site when it comes to organic search. You can start implementing some of the tips from this section of the workshop to help improve your website chances of appearing in the organic search results. But in the meantime, let's move on to the next thing you can do to appear on Google. And you all can always come back and work on this um, after this session today. So create your business profile. Now we're going to look at the second way your business can show up in the search results by creating or claiming your free business profile on Google Search and Maps. And remember, I said free. All the um, things we're offering and teaching you how to do are free. The only thing that has um, any fee associated with them is ads. And we will talk about those later and tell you how that works. So a business profile helps you stand out on Google. When we searched in the last section, we are concentrating on organic search. Now let's talk about what you may see appear on the right side of search results page highlighted here in the business profile. You can create a free business profile by visiting google.com backslash business. A business profile helps local businesses be found and manage business information on Google search and maps. Think of your business profile as sort of the digital front window for your business. It allows you to showcase valuable current information that will help customers plan their visit to your location, such as hours of service. Um, it also has the call feature, so you can click it. And I mean, how many of us have um, no numbers even stored in our phone when we can select this call feature? It also has the link to your website. Once you create and claim your business profile, which is called verification, you can manage the information as it appears on Google Search and Maps. Within that dashboard, you can update your address, your phone number, your website, your hours of operation, answer reviews, which helps boost um, your visibility, and many more things to help um, customers find and connect with your business. A business profile can be created for businesses that either have a physical location for customers to visit or that travel um, to visit customers where they are. So I worked with a lady last week who was a realtor. So she works from home and she didn't want to use her home address. And you don't have to do that. You can put in a radius of how far you're willing to go to meet with your customer in person. The general rule is that businesses must make an in-person contact with customers during its stated hours. So make the most of your business profile. 
by including as much business information as you can, including the hours of operation and special hours. So holiday hours or um, if you're closed, you know, for a week for vacation, make sure that's all updated. When you access your account, you can update the information directly from search as long as you are signed into the Google account that manages your profile. Regularly update your business profile with photos of your products. Your storefront, which is incredibly important, um, as I said earlier, when you go on vacation and you're looking for, you know, best pizza place in town and it shows you a picture of the storefront as you're driving to that location, you know what you're looking for. Um, also, photos of the interior to let people know, you know, what does it look like? What's the atmosphere? Whatever best showcases what you have to offer. A quality photo, um, like I said, of your storefront is so beneficial just so people know what they're looking for. Um, depending on your business, you may see additional features in your account like booking, products, and services. Make sure to add as much information as you can. You can also use business profile to engage with customers. Starting with post, posts allow merchants to post live updates directly on their business profile. Um, you can share information, encourage reservations, promote a newsletter, encourage people to buy products, etc. Second, online reviews. Once your business profile is verified, you have the option to read and respond to reviews about your business published on Google. Business owners often ask for advice about negative reviews, usually wanting to know how can we remove them. And Google won't remove um, a review unless it violates a content policy. Instead, Google encourages business owners to respond. Responses might explain a company's policy for why the situation happened or thank happy customers for the positive feedback. The timeliness and professionalism of responsiveness demonstrates that business listens to customer feedback and can positively influence customers. Third um, feature to try is messages. The messages feature allows you to chat directly with customers who find your business profile. Responding to customers can help you answer their questions, tell your business a story, and attract more people to your location. And this is just um, the slide just is showing the features that are offered and kind of what they look like on the back end. If you have not yet created a free business profile, these are the steps you will um, follow to get started. So you'll um, go to google.com backslash business, claim or complete your business profile. So most likely your business is going to show up um, thanks to Google and all their infinite wisdom. And but you need to um, request verification so that you have access to make any edits and changes. And Google may offer you the option to verify by phone text, email video, or a postcard. I know I've had people um, who've had to video their storefront or show um, photos of bills that that is their um, location. They want to make sure you are who you say you are so somebody isn't trying to um, impersonate you or, um, you know, give off inaccurate information. If you receive a verification code number, you'll need to enter that number into your profile to complete the verification. Okay, now advertising. And don't worry, we're going to have time at the end for questions. So um, I want to make sure we can get through everything. And then at the very end, we'll do some questions. Now that we've covered search engine optimization and your business profile, the third way you can reach customers is with online advertising. Advertising on Google is called pay-per-click advertising. So earlier we showed how the ads right here um, on the right-hand side of your screen, how that shows up. And then you have the organic searches. And then over on the right-hand side, you have um, the business profile. So if you are to click on this ad at the top, you only pay when people click to take an action, like clicking your ad or calling your business. The ads reach people who are actively searching for products and services you offer, helping you connect with likely customers. Your ads can also appear on websites that are part of Google's display network, which includes millions of partner sites. 
these ads can reach people earlier in the buying cycle, not just when they're searching for things related to your business, but when they're browsing related content or watching a video on YouTube. Depending the goals you set, the Google ad system will automatically determine where to show your ads to give you the best chance for success. Like I said, this screenshot highlights where the text ad can appear and on a search results page. Um, I also mentioned earlier that you can appear in the ads at the top, but you also might be two or three in the organic search results. So um, just know that the company is getting some type of payment back for the ads or they are paying for the ones you click when you click ad. In this section, we're going to focus on um, smart campaigns with Google ads. And we do have a whole um, workshop just on Google Ads. So if this is something that's new to you and you're interested in, um, we will be offering the basics of Google Ads on September 6th. So just know that this isn't the complete overview. So the Smart Campaigns is a campaign designed for small businesses and new advertisers. Smart Campaigns are flexible. You choose your goal and customize your content. This type of campaign works with all kinds of budgets, so there's no contractor fees to get started. You control when and where ads can show and the budget. Your ads can do whatever you want them to do. They can bring visitors to your website. They can also drive phone calls and store visits. Smart campaigns can be set up in just a few steps. And to get started, you would go to ads.google.com and begin signing into your Google Ads account. Or you can create an account by visiting the same and clicking start now. And again, that will be in your resource page. So this checklist can help you launch a successful smart campaign. First, decide what your goal is for that particular campaign. You might have multiple, so you could have multiple campaigns. So first, ask yourself, why are you advertising? What do you want to achieve? Add information about your business so customers can recognize when they see an ad or get to learn who you are. Identify where you want a visitor to land on your site after they clicked your ad. Write an ad that encourages people to take action. Choose keyword themes and locations where you want your ads to appear. So keyword themes are words or phrases that help match your ads with Google searches. You can set your daily budget. And remember, you pay only when somebody interacts with your ad. Once you have all those pieces, you're ready to launch. So we're going to walk through this so you kind of know what you're looking for um, as you're doing your own. So we'll do it step by step. You're doing two of these two things. You're creating your Google Ads account and you're also creating your first smart campaign. So I'll let you all pull this up so you can be walking through it with me. So remember ads google.com and you'll see let's get started what is your business name and this should be the name that you want potential customers to know next you'll enter the address of the web page that you want people to visit after clicking your ad it might not be the home page Ideally, an ad click takes the searcher directly to the most relevant web page, like a product page. You can preview the selected web page on a mobile and desktop device. So as you can see here, this is what you can see. It's a little more spread out on um, the mobile. I mean, on the desktop versus the mobile. And be sure your web page looks good and is easy to use no matter which device they're using. I know I said that before, but can't um, express that importance enough. Now you'll select your advertising goal, whether you want to get more calls, get more website sales or signups, get more visits to your physical location, get more views um, on YouTube. If you have more than one goal, you might need to create a separate ad. So think of this as, you know, being um, very simplistic. You want to make sure your campaign meets that one goal. It's all targeted toward that one goal. 
Next, you'll write a text ad. This slide shows the fields that you'll want to fill out to write your ad. And an automatic character count lets you know how much space you have. And you can see a preview of the ad on the right-hand side of the page. Note the checkbox that allows you to include a call button with your ad. A call button allows searchers on smartphones to initiate a phone call by clicking your ad. And how many of you have used this feature multiple times? Smart campaigns use keyword themes. They help show um, ads to the right searchers, and they also are related to the product or service being advertised. Google Ads will suggest related keyword themes based on your text and landing page. Should you select themes that describe the focus of your ad, not necessarily everything your business has to offer. And as you can see over here um, on the right hand side, what it kind of looks like, selected search or keyword themes, and then they suggest some keyword themes. So some of them might be really relevant to your business and others may not. Just know that you want to make sure it's accurate. Whatever you select to be um, displayed is accurate for your business. Next, select the geographic locations where your ads are eligible to appear. Google Ad gives you a variety of options, including zip codes, cities, regions, or radius around an address. And like I was saying earlier, um, the lady I worked with last week, she so when she set up her business profile account, she can put her address in as her home address and ask that that not be shared and then just do that um, radius around her home address. So if she wanted to do 100 miles that she's willing to drive um, to provide her service, she can. So this slide shows the radius and ads are eligible to appear to the searchers who are physically located in the highlighted area or searchers looking specifically for results in this area. Some people and businesses might want to target um, people in other locations. Google Ads also allows advertisers to show ads to people in other states, cities, regions, or zip codes, even if they're you know, extremely far from the business location, but say they have um, something that somebody on the West Coast might really um, be popular, they can target that area as well. After that, you'll see a daily average budget, the average amount you could spend each day. This slide shows several budget options. Toggling between options shows you an estimated number of daily clicks. So you can see the $2.80 um, can get you between 40 and 110 clicks per month. $7.40 average gets you between 120 and 280. And $17.50 average gets you between 280 and 650. That's been at about $532 a month um, max on um, marketing on this getting your results. With smart campaigns, you're ultimately setting a maximum monthly budget. And Google Ad multiplies your daily budget by 30.4, which is the average number of days in a month. The product is your maximum monthly budget. Your daily ad spend may vary, but the total ad spend won't exceed the maximum monthly budget. And one more important note, you're only charged for the clicks you receive. So that's like the icing on the cake about the Google Ads. For example, if your maximum monthly budget is 150, but your ad spend is 10, you'll be charged $10, not the 150. And also, if you increase your budget in the middle of a billing period, the maximum amount that you'll be charged for that month will be your new average daily budget times the number of days remaining in the month. And I honestly think the ads piece is something you have to get in there and play with. Um, until you feel comfortable in setting that budget that you feel most comfortable with for your business. Once you've set up all the pieces of your ad campaign, make sure you review for accuracy. The last thing you want to do is have um, things that are inaccurate to be put out on the web. If you see something that needs to change, you can always go back and make edits um, anytime you want, which is also nice. You need to submit payment information to send your ad um, to campaign so that it can be um, published. 
And once the ad campaign is launched, you'll be able to access additional features like ad scheduling. Ad scheduling allows you to select days of the week and times of the day when ads are eligible to appear. This is very useful if you don't want ads to show during hours when your business is closed. So you don't want people clicking on your business um, if you're a restaurant, maybe at 2 or 3 a.m. when you're not open. That depends on um, if that works for your business model or not, of course. So this is how you set up a smart campaign. Good afternoon, Virginia Holland, Small Business Incubator. Once your campaign is up and running, you can continually review its performance and make adjustments. You can create different versions of your ads to see which get more of the results you want. More ads can lead up to 15% better performance without increasing your budget, which is always a plus. The budget's always um, first of everybody's mind. You can add negative keyword themes, themes that you want to exclude to be sure your ads don't show on searches that aren't relevant to your business. For example, if you um, sell gourmet jam, you might not want to show your ad when people are searching for recipes. This helps you focus on your ad budget on ad clicks that are more likely to deliver the results you want. Get more specific about when you want your ad step here, whether it's weekdays or business hours only. You can connect your ad campaign to Google Analytics, which is also a free tool that can show you what people do on your website after clicking the ad and also other traffic sources too. See how many times your ad appears, which is called impressions, and how many times your ad is acted upon, which is called clicks. So impressions is how many times it appears, clicks is how many times it's acted upon. And don't forget, you can always pause your campaign at any time. So recap. <laughs> <laughs> I know this has been a ton of information and I told Sandy, I said, let's wait till the end to do questions because it's so much information. But just a reminder, she will be sharing um, a PDF of the PowerPoint presentation, a handout that does um, a couple walkthroughs for um, the lesson today, and then also a link to the recording. So the three ways to appear on Google, you've got the text ad box at the very top, the organic results and then the business profile on the right. And remember, just because the business profile shows up, you have to go in and verify that that's yours so you can make changes to that and also um, answer any questions and respond to Google reviews. So first, build or improve your website to make it search and mobile friendly. Try the tools we mentioned today's in, in today's workshop, which are the Google Trends the mobile friendly test, and the Google Search Console. Next, create or claim your business profile. And if you've already completed these steps, make sure to visit your profile and make updates and keep it current. A lot of the people I've worked with have um, claimed their business. They went in and made some changes and they forgot about it. They like sat it up on the shelf and didn't go back to it again. So this is something that you should keep um, as a, you know, weekly or monthly to do item so that you can make sure, you know, if the holidays are coming up or if you have new products, you can showcase that. So make that um, free resource work for you because you definitely know if that's where people go to search and how your business is going to come up. And lastly, you can try Google Ads. You can fine tune your offers when people are searching for your products and services. The resource guide that I kept referring to, this is it. It has all the links on there that we discussed today. Um, so like I said, you'll be receiving this, but that gives you a quick um, guide to go back to those. So Sandy, questions? Um, I we've had several people in the chat um, um, actually help each other. And I think a lot okay. of those have already been um, answered. If you've got any other questions for uh, Courtney, please uh, speak up. Um, um, we do have somebody that wants to hear from you. Um, Nicole, can you give more is it more in depth about your question about what other things that help boost visibility for this app? She had put in there like posting pictures, reviews, and keeping hours updated seems to help. What else? Uh, 
Uh, I, she's referring to Google My Business in particular. Okay, so she just wants to know um, what like, other um, things what, that can help um, with um, the search engine optimization. Yes. Okay, yes. so um, and Nicole, feel free to reach out to me after this, and I'll be happy to um, look at your website and also look at your Google Business profile. So. There's tons of things you can do. Once you get into the profile settings, the times um, that you have set, the call um, feature, the more features you use and have available on there, the easier it is for Google to pick you up. And also um, being deliberate with the wording that you use is so important because when people go to search for you, so you need to know what your competitors are using um, when you go in and put those keywords, what websites come up for you? Um, you need to know what they're using to make sure that you are using some of the same things, but also using those negative words um, that's not pulling. So you, you know, depending on what their title of their business is, you might want to use a different pull that negative word, put that negative word in. So that's not what comes up when your business is pulled. I don't know if that completely answers your question, but I'm happy to work with you one on one to work on your site. And Josh Pennington wanted to know, uh, do you have a date on the course for the search engine optimization to occur? I don't see that on our list of new knowledge sessions, but are you doing one for any other community or I'm not at this time, but um, if you will just Sandy has the QR code that has all of our um workshops on it just keep an eye on that we're constantly adding more so I will make sure and put that on the um, list that people might want to see and if we need to we can uh, if there's enough interest I, I'm, I'm cool with trying to s squeeze one in uh, before between now and, and December at some point or just do it special um, just on, you know a one-off on its own um, how important uh, we have on website for our business. Can we connect our business profile with our uh, social media page? We mainly create content on Instagram and TikTok. So you can provide that information on there. It is important um, to show up in the Google search results if you want to be um, one of those first ones that people see when they search for something that you're selling. So we do have the establish a professional domain website and email for your business on October 18th. So I would definitely recommend that you attend that session. And uh, do you um, do you have a slide that has your contact information as your next one? I do. Yes. Red Rover, so, Red Rover, just send that right up. I will. So our next session um, will be on August the 16th, and that's collaborate, meet, and work remotely. And then we have September the, why is it not moving? September the 6th, learn the basics of Google Ads. So this is a whole workshop just on Google Ads. And then here is my contact information. So you have my email and my phone number, and that is my personal number. So um, I do work a full-time position. So if you call during the day, leave a message so I can give you a call back. And if not, um, shoot me a text. That's probably the easiest or send me an email. Okay. And last but not least, I still have a few minutes to answer questions. But before anybody hops off, I want to say thank you to our partners. So, of course, Main Street America and Downtown Withful for supporting this initiative. And then the Higher Education, Southwest Virginia Higher Education Center, located here in Abingdon, UVA WISE. Virginia Community Capital, and Virginia Main Street. They are the ones that put forth funding to make this um, project happen and to be able to offer these free trainings to you all. And so we are so incredibly thankful um, for their support to be able to assist our entrepreneurs and our Main Streets and have growth in our rural communities. So thank you um, to the new knowledge team for allowing me to be a part of this wonderful program you all offer and to um, be able to reach so many people. So we really appreciate you all. Great. Thank you. Um, 
Courtney, thanks so much for leading today's session. I really appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm trying to get this. Uh, sorry. Uh, just again, we couldn't do it without you. So thanks for sharing your um, the content and your expertise this morning. And again, as Court Courtney said, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Um, and I hope you're making plans to join us again uh, at our uh, August the 16th session. Um, so, and if you enjoyed today's session, please share that with someone else that they can, uh, when I send you the content, um, this is what we're doing it for is to help our business and community uh, folks and nonprofits. So um, again, thank you for doing that. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, this session is being recorded and it'll be uh, uploaded to the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubators Facebook page, but it will also be on our new knowledge YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube dot com forward slash put in new knowledge and you will see that just give me a couple hours to upload that um, again thanks for joining us and let me check chat one more time um, nope that's it and welcome uh, Charles City Virginia Sharon thanks for joining us yeah uh, thank you Sharon um, I had talked with your all's Main Street director and I'm so glad to see some of you all on there and I had told them make sure you all register so you can get all those resources that Sandy just talked about even if you can't be here at noon she definitely will share that information with you so thank you all for taking time today to be here thanks everybody have a great rest of your day thank Bye -bye. you Sandy